Hi there, welcome back to 52 Weeks of Vlogging. It is Sunday, November 10th, actually, like, for real. So for my video today, I'm gonna tell you what I did two Sundays ago, because two Sundays ago was another pretty awesome day. And it was awesome because I got to share in two incredibly awesome things, namely the book launches for two of my friends' books. So first, I headed up to Indigo Yorkdale, which is a huge bookstore in an even huger mall. Like, seriously, possibly the hugest mall in North America, or if it's not the hugest mall, it might be the mall that gets the most foot traffic. I read a statistic about that somewhere. Yeah, we're just gonna go with that. And I was going there for the launch of my friend Cheryl Rainfield's book, Stained. Stained is about a girl named Sarah Meadows who has a port wine stain on her face and feels that this has affected her life pretty much from the very beginning in an extremely negative way and would do just about anything to get rid of it. Let me read you the beginning. Sarah, 8 a.m. Today is the day I've been waiting for my entire life. The beginning of normal. I reach for the latest 17 and flip through its glossy pages until I find the perfect face. The girl is pretty, with wide green eyes, hollow cheekbones, and full pouty lips. But what I notice most is her smooth, unblemished skin. It's perfect. I cut the photo out and stick it above my bed in the last of the space. Now I can't even see the sunlight yellow of my walls, but the confidence that shines in these faces is even brighter. And today, I'm going to get so much closer to that. I don't care how much the treatments hurt. It'll be worth it. It can't hurt as much as the stares and rude comments I get every day. I know I shouldn't let people's ignorance get to me. Mom's always telling me I'm beautiful, that it's what's inside that counts. But she's not living in the real world. Sure, whether you're kind or good matters, but pretty people automatically get better treatment. Ugly people get ignored, if they're lucky. And me, I get stares, taunts, or people going out of their way to pretend they don't see me. I try to think of it as fuel for my comic scripts. All heroes have to go through personal trauma before they find their true strength. And most of them feel like outsiders even after they do. Like Clark Kent not being able to save his adopted father from a heart attack even though he's Superman and his never being able to share his entire self with anyone except his parents. Being an outsider and always having people react to my face until they get used to me hurts. That's why I created Diamond. Yes! Okay, so we have an incredibly well-drawn character. She's strong inside and she's found an outlet for that inner strength by creating her own comic strips, which is completely awesome. I love that we have a main character who creates superheroes and I love that that character is a girl because superheroes are typically a boy territory kind of thing and that's just crap. Also, let's hear it for Superman on page two! And I also really love this girl's dilemma that she has this issue that she's faced her entire life and she finally finds a way that she thinks she can handle it, except of course something is gonna get in her way and I'm not gonna spoil any more of the book for you, but you have to get it. Also, Cheryl Rainfield is a survivor of abuse and she brings a lot of that insight and personal experience into her novels, which is an extraordinary thing to do. It's a brave thing to do. It's a strong thing to do. And I admire her so much for doing it over and over and over again and for bringing these stories to the world so that other kids going through what she went through can know that they're not alone and that there is a way out. Also, her launches kick ass, literally and metaphorically. For example, we had an incredible self-defense demonstration from Wendo Women's Self-Defense. Here's a video of a teacher from Wendo demonstrating one of the most effective self-defense techniques. And there's even more to learn if you wanna take some self-defense classes with Wendo, you can contact them at one of the places on this card. Links also down in the description. We also saw a fantastic demonstration of how to get out of someone's clutches if someone actually manages to grab you from Macaulay from JKD family. If you want to contact them for some more classes, links down in the description. And then after I picked up a copy of Cheryl's book for myself, which she kindly signed, and after I gave her my congratulations and thanked the demonstrators from Wendo and from JKD family, I shot back downtown for the book launch of my friend Patricia Storms's picture book, Never Let You Go. Also available in French. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but my favorite way to learn a new language is to read a book both in English and in the language I'm trying to learn. Never Let You Go tells the 
the story of a parent's never-ending love for their children and how as a parent we really feel that we never want to let our little kids go. Except maybe for the occasional emergency. I love the humor in this book and I also love the honesty in this book. I think she really nailed it. So if you have kids or know somebody who has kids, this is a fantastic choice. The Never Let You Go launch was another fantastic launch. Patricia drew some awesome illustrations. There were some incredible crafts and also cake. Seriously guys, if you know any authors, you need to get on this book launch bandwagon because dude, cake! Also, I really love the book and I invited my friends Allie and Mitchell who you saw this video of yesterday. This is the video actually from two weeks ago when I actually met up with them at the book launch. Actually, that was the first time I'd met Mitchell. Allie brought him, but he was a super nice guy. Allie wanted to interview me for a graphic design project. We had a wonderful dinner and that was awesome. I look forward to hanging out with both of them more in the future. I think meeting other writers and meeting other other people doing creative things like noveling or creating graphic design or creating anything really is one of the really vital parts of being a creator. It puts you in around people who understand what you're doing and who get why you do what you do even though you don't really get paid much for it or even though it's a lot of extra work. And that kind of thing feeds your spirit and it feeds your creative energy and it feeds your drive to keep creating because you're not the only one doing it anymore. Two Sundays ago was a fantastic Sunday. Today was also a fantastic Sunday. I got a lot more writing done. Also the Hubbles went grocery shopping and brought me this. No fear. <laughs> It's totally fair. It's writing motivation. Uh... And apparently now I have to make something really yummy for the kidlets. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.